Welcome to Figure Feedback. My name is Jeremy, and today I'm going to show you how you can make your own multicolored lithophanes using a Bamboo Lab printer and its accompanying AMS. So for me, I'm using the Bamboo Lab A1 with the AMS light, but this will still work if you've got a P1P, a P1S, a X1C, whatever you got. Along with that AMS, is going to work all the same. So if you aren't familiar with lithophanes, go ahead and check out this video that I made. You can click on the link somewhere above my head or you can check down in the description. It's going to give you a nice rundown on what lithophanes are and what multicolor lithophanes are and you'll be able to see a few examples of some that I printed out there. Now before we get started you need to obtain the filament that you need in order to do these lithophanes. So here's a couple places where you can get it. The first option here is going to be directly from Bamboo Lab and as you see here you can get this PLA CMNK lithophane bundle on sale right now for $69.99. It's going to come with the four colors that you need to do this, cyan, magenta, yellow, and white. So you can get it from here. They are currently sold out of the bundle that comes with the backlight board, which is this right here, but you can buy the backlight board separately by itself. But apparently the bundle is not available right now. So that's one option that you can have. The second option is getting it directly from eSun, and this is the filament that I'm using for this. And on eSun's official website, they're selling it for $79.99 right now. And there's also a sale going on as indicated in this banner up above. So you can check this out here if you'd rather go the eSun route. And then you can also get the same thing over on Amazon. The eSun CMYK PLA filament bundle on Amazon currently has a 10% off discount going on. So if I were to purchase it from Amazon based on where I live and the tax that I have to pay, the total will come out to be $76.31. So there's an $8 discount applied. So you choose where you would prefer to purchase this filament, but I will have links in the description so that you can purchase it either from Amazon, from Bamboo Lab, or directly from eSun itself. All right, so now we need a picture to make the lithophane from. So this is the image that I'm going to be using. This is the God Emperor of Mankind from Warhammer 40K. And this is just an ordinary JPEG that I'm grabbing off the internet. Now you're going to have to make sure you get a JPEG for this in order for everything to work properly. And if you don't have a JPEG, there's a lot of different sites that you can go on that will let you convert from a PNG or whatever other file that you have into a JPEG for free. So make sure that you've got your JPEG, save this to your computer, and now we're going to head over to the Lithophane Maker website. So this is lithophanemaker.com, link down in the description, and we're going to use this in order to get all the files that we need to put into Bamboo Studio so that we can start making this lithophane. So now the first thing that we need to do is upload our picture. So I'm going to go to choose file right here and grab that image of the God Emperor. And once I have that uploaded, you can see the image right here. Now you can print a full size lithophane if you want, but if you want to use that LED backlight board that Bamboo Lab sells, you're going to have to crop it down in order to fit that. So if you choose to crop this down, what you would do is go over to the left side and click on crop and we'll need to change the width and the height of this. So for the width, we have to change this to 144 millimeters. And then for the height, we need to change this to 108 millimeters. And when we do that, you can see that the image over here now has this square around it. And we're gonna have to adjust that in order to make it frame properly. But while we're over here, there's another option that we can change. We wanna keep this layer height here. It says close to 0.1 millimeters is recommended. So we're gonna keep it at 0.1. But for the first layer height, we're gonna change it from 0.2 to 0.15. These other options here, you can play with it if you want, but I'm not going to because I've been happy with how the lithophanes have turned out as far as the thickness goes. We just leave it at default, it's fine for the maximum and the minimum thickness. And then as far as this estimated runtime and this file size here, you know, you don't have to worry about any of these other options. 
Now over here we do, however, because if we were to print this like this, then his face is cut off. So we need to adjust it. We got the X shift and the Y shift down here. Now I want to move this square up. So to do that, I'm just going to mess with the Y shift. So I'm just going to click and hold on this arrow. And then you can see that the box is moving up and down. So I want to get it to about, I would say about right there is where I'm comfortable with. The rectangle scale, I'm going to keep it at 1.0 here. And now we can start to export this. Um, oh, and by the way, it says select palette down here. You can leave this at default. The E-Sun, warm white, purple, magenta, hatchbox, yellow, AIO, and cyan. You just leave it like that. But here are some other options here as well. But we're just going to leave it at the default. And now before you can do anything else, you have to put in your email address and create STS. So I put in my email address, jeremy at figurefeedback.com. And then once I do that, I can click on this show expected image button and it's going to show me what the lithophane is going to look like when it is all done. So that's what it's going to look like with the crop applied. All right. So now that we've done that and click on create STL and save the file, it's going to be a zip file. Now here I am in Bamboo Studio. Now once you get that folder with your files, there's going to be five image files that you need to highlight and drag all of them into Bamboo Studio at the same time. And when you do that, you're going to get this dialog box that says load these files as a single object with multiple parts. Just click yes. And then there is the image. You're probably also going to get this error down here for non manifold edges. You can try to repair it. It's going to take a while to do for some reason when you do lithophanes and I never do and everything just turns out just fine anyway. So I'm just going to X out of that, but we do need to change some settings. Now, first of all, it is recommended that you use a 0.2 millimeter nozzle for lithophanes for the best quality, but you can still do 0.4 millimeter. Um, you can still use a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and it's still going to look good. In fact, that's what I'm going to be using for this image here. So we got it at the 0.4 millimeters. And now when we go down to layer height under the quality tab and advanced is also checked as well. We have our layer height at 0.1. Nice. We indicate it in, on the lithophane website and then the initial layer height is 0.15. Also, as we indicated on that website, we're going to move over to the strength tab and under the strength tab, we're going to have the top shell layers at three by default for me, it's at five. We're just going to change that to three. The top shell thickness is going to be zero by default. Mine's is one. So I'm going to change that to zero. The bottom shell layers also at three bottom shell thickness also at zero and then make sure that you use the sparse infill density setting at 100% with the rectilinear rectilinear. I can't even pronounce that properly, but make sure it's on that one at 100% not going to do anything else with the rest of these settings under strength. You're not going to touch anything in speed, no supports necessary. And then for others, what I'm going to do is apply an outer brim and the outer brim just gives me a little bit more security and peace of mind in that those four corners, these edges, it's a greater chance of them not lifting off of the build plate if we do use a brim. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. It's going to be the outer brim and almost done. Now we just need to assign the appropriate colors and it makes it really, really easy for us because now we just have to go over to this objects option right here, right next to global. And you see, we have all these files here. And at the end of the file, it has a color and we just have to assign the appropriate color. Now, by now, I'm also assuming that you've already put the filament in your AMS or connected it to your AMS light. It's ready to go and you have those colors already assigned. You have the AMS light, you can assign it right there on the Bamboo Lab A1, or you can do it here in the slicer, whichever you choose to do. All right, so you see here for the first one, it says cyan. That's basically blue. So we're going to leave that alone. Next one is cyan. We're going to leave that alone. The next one is magenta. So now I need to press four because that's where my magenta color is loaded in the AMS. That changes to magenta. 
Next one is going to be white. So I'm going to hit three because that's where the white is in my AMS light. The next one is white as well. And then the last color is going to be yellow. So that one is in spot two. So we've got cyan, cyan, magenta, white, white, and yellow. Everything is assigned. And this is our image. Now we're going to hit slice. And when you slice this file, it's going to take not a long time, but it's going to be longer than a usual normal file that you would slice in Bamboo Studio. So just give it a little bit of time and everything will be done. It might take about a minute, maybe two. So now the sliced file is done and you see that it is going to take five hours and 42 minutes in order to print. And we don't have to worry about setting uh, any pauses or any filament changes from this menu here. It's already built in. So if we start all the way down here at the first layer, you'll see we're going to get some color mixed in as it goes on. And then everything's going to be topped off with white. You'll use more white filament than anything. And there's not much waste. So if we just combine the flushed filament waste along with the tower waste, which is the tower is right here, then it's only going to come out to close to 10 grams of filament that we're just going to wave bye bye to. But the entire model itself is going to require, you know, 40 grams. So it's, it's not a lot of waste. So to me, it's always worth it. And like I said, you will be using more white than anything else. So you'll be able to just make a bunch of different lithophanes and uh, you won't have to worry about running out of filament anytime soon. And it's going to take 17 filament changes. So at this point, you can just hit print plate and you can send it over to the printer wirelessly. If you prefer to do it through the micro SD card, you can do that too. Whatever it is that you wanna do, make sure that these colors here are matching up with the colors that you have in your AMS. Hit send or whatever, and then you can start your print. So let's take a look at the finished product. So here is the God Emperor of Mankind, Lithophane in all of his glory, but of course you can't see it because it is all white. But once we shine a light behind it, we can see that it looks absolutely awesome. See like that, everything is white, can't really see it, it's all white, but then look at that. The emperor would be proud. And I did have a, the brim around it, but I trimmed it off using an X-Acto knife. So now it's pretty flat. So yeah, that's how you can make your own multicolored lithophanes. So that's it you guys and I hope this tutorial has been useful to you and if it has been do me a favor and leave a like on this video and if you want to see more stuff like this be sure to subscribe because I always have more coming including a video in which I'm going to be making use of my wasted purged filament from the Bamboo Lab A1 and I'm going to be doing something useful with it. So if you want to see that video be sure to stay tuned but that's all for now and until then take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon.